Good afternoon. I'm NASA Press Secretary Bethany Stevens. Welcome to NASA Johnson Space Center's Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility, where we're proud to host this next generation of innovators for Second Lady Usha Vance's Summer Reading Challenge. I'd like to welcome our former Johnson Space Center Director and our Acting Associate Administrator, Vanessa Weish. Thank you, Bethany. Hello, everyone. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome you to NASA Johnson Space Center, where we're going to have a special reading with the Second Lady of the United States, Ms. Usha Vance. The Second Lady's passion to encourage literacy through her summer reading challenge is truly commendable. And her presence here today reflects how deeply she values the power of stories to open young minds. At NASA, our mission is not only to push the boundaries of what is possible in space, but also to ignite the imaginations of tomorrow's explorers here on Earth. When students hear stories about courage and discovery, they begin to see themselves as a part of the story. And to the students joining us today, NASA, was built by people who were where you are, listening, wondering, and thinking boldly. Whether you aspire to be an astronaut, an engineer, a scientist, or a writer, know that the possibilities are endless. So listen closely, ask questions, and let your imagination soar. We thank Ms. Vance again for being here and taking the time to read to our next generation of explorers. Now, please join me in welcoming our very own NASA astronaut, Sonny Williams. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Wow, I am so excited to be here with you guys. Are you pumped? This is going to be a fun day, huh? Woohoo! Um, so I'm so thrilled, just like Vanessa, to be here with someone whose passion for learning reaches beyond the stars. Usha Vance is an accomplished attorney, advocate, and mother of three who's inspiring the next generation through the Summer Reading Challenge. She's turning pages into possibilities, encouraging young minds across America and beyond to dream big. That's you guys. Read often and aim high. So please join me in welcoming a true champion for education and imagination, the Second Lady of the United States, Usha Vance. Hello, guys, and thank you so much for letting me come join you here at camp today. This is really exciting for me because I love space, and I love NASA, and I can't believe that I get to hang out with a real astronaut. So I can't believe you guys get to do this all week. But I just wanted to invite you to do something with me this summer after camp's over. Um, my kids are actually here hiding somewhere in this room. And this summer we've been reading a lot of books. And what we are doing is a summer reading challenge where if you read 12 books, you can pick anything you want. It could be about space, dinosaurs, princesses, it doesn't matter. Just write those down on a list, ask your parents to send it to me, and I'll send you a little prize at the end and a certificate congratulating you on being a big summer reader. And I'll also enter your name in a drawing to come visit the White House in Washington, DC. So I hope you'll try to do it. Talk to your parents about it. It'll be a lot of fun. And now I think we have a book that we're going to read together and answer some of your questions. OK, I think we should get started. What do you think? All right, well, I understand you guys can see the pictures, but if anyone needs me to turn it around, you shout it out, okay? We're reading Margaret and the Moon, How Margaret Hamilton Saved the First Lunar Landing. It's by Dean Robbins, illustrated by Lucy Nisley. So. Margaret Hamilton loved to solve problems. 
She came up with ideas no one had ever thought of before. Why were only daddy, their only daddy long legs? Margaret had a solution. She would call some of them mommy long legs too. Why didn't girls play baseball? Margaret had a solution. She would join the team herself. Why didn't more girls grow up to be doctors or scientists or anything else they wanted? Margaret had a solution. She would study hard in every subject at school. Reading, music, art, and especially mathematics. She learned as much as she could about addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. Margaret's father was a poet and philosopher who talked to her about the universe. She asked about how the planets moved, when the galaxies formed, why the stars shone. She gazed at the night sky in wonder. How many miles to the moon? 238,855. How many miles does it travel around the Earth? 1,423,000. How fast does it go? 2,288 miles per hour. How big round is it? 6,783 miles. Margaret began solving harder and harder math problems. It was fun working her way through the steps. She liked moving around the X's and Y's in algebra. She liked measuring circles and triangles in geometry. She liked studying curves in calculus. And then she discovered computers. <laughs> Margaret could use this new invention to answer so many questions about the universe. She experimented with writing instructions or code that told the machine what to do. The code was called software, and Margaret called herself a software engineer. She started with something simple, asking the computer to add and subtract, multiply and divide. Margaret taught herself to write code that performed more and more complicated tasks. She programmed computers to track airplanes through the clouds and even to predict the weather. She made them do things they had never done before. In 1964, Margaret got interested in an exciting project for NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Their scientists were working on the hardest problem humans ever tried to solve, flying people to the moon. Could Margaret use computers to get the astronauts? 238,855 miles there and 238,855 miles back? She convinced NASA's leaders to let her try. Margaret thought of everything that could happen on a trip to the moon. Would the spacecraft go off course? Would it lose power? Would an astronaut make a mistake? Margaret wrote code to tell the computers how to solve these problems. She worked her way through the steps, just as she used to do in math class. Soon, Margaret became director of software programming for NASA's Project Apollo, leading dozens of scientists. She helped Apollo 8 orbit the moon 10 times. She helped Apollo 9 connect to two ships in space. She helped Apollo, 11, er, Apollo 10 get within nine miles of the moon's surface. Hello there. With Apollo 11, NASA would finally try to put people on the moon. Had Margaret thought of everything that could go wrong with the lunar landing? She checked her code again to make sure. The astronauts were depending on her. You see the stack of Margaret's code there? All right. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, liftoff! and Apollo 11 rose with a blast of the smoke and fire. Margaret followed along from a control room and the whole world watched on television. <laughs> For four days, the spacecraft drew nearer to the moon. The lunar module named the Eagle split off to make the landing. Yippee! But with minutes left to go, an astronaut entered a command and the master alarm buzzed. Oops. The Eagle's computer started performing too many tasks. Overload, overload, yikes. The control room panicked. The moon landing was in danger. Everyone looked at Margaret. Had she prepared for this problem? Of course. Margaret's code made the computer ignore the extra tasks and focus on the landing. It brought the eagle closer to the moon's surface. Closer, 
closer. Touchdown. The Eagle has landed, announced astronaut Neil Armstrong. The control room cheered. Margaret was a hero. Later that night, the Eagle's hatch opened. Margaret held her breath. Armstrong took the first step on the moon. The whole world celebrated in front of their televisions. Because they're all saying, hurrah. <laughs> Margaret walked outside smiling. Her coat had helped the astronauts get to the moon, and she knew it would help get them home safely. As always, she gazed at the night sky in wonder. Houston's Explorer Camps and children of our Johnson Space Center employees but also children from across the nation and the world on NASA Plus. We know a lot of questions. We know you have a lot of questions for the second lady and our NASA astronaut, Sunny. So we'll jump right in and try to get to as many as possible. Caroline, a third grader from Tennessee, wants to know what each of your favorite planets are and why. What are our favorite planets? Planets. Planets, oh. Oh, okay, you want me to start with that one? Yeah. So it's awesome to look at planets and go outside and look at the night sky but it's actually even more awesome when you're in a spacecraft and you can look down at this planet. So I have to say Earth is my favorite planet because we can also wear our bathing suits and go to the beach. Other planets that might be a little bit more problematic. <laughs> well, that's a really good answer and probably should be my answer too. But I'll say that Jupiter is my favorite planet. And in fact, in our house, we have a painting that my little boy made when he was five. Of Jupiter is seen through the asteroid belt and that's the way that I like to think about it. All right, and then I know Brooks R, who's in the crowd. I know you have a question for both Ms. Vance and Sunny. If you wanna come meet Jarrell up at this microphone right here. If you could bring one thing to the surface of the moon, what would it be? Hmm? Well, you know, we get we prepare a lot for the things that we're going to do on the moon, but or wherever we go in space. But you never know if something might come up that you might not, you know, know how to do or haven't practiced. So I would probably bring a tool, and a tool that I like is a like a Leatherman that has multi tools. It has all sorts of little things on it, and that way, if you run into any little problem. You have your tool, your trusty tool with you right there to help fix and solve that problem. I think it's pretty unlikely I'd get to go to the moon since I'm not an astronaut like Sunny, but if I were lucky enough to do that, I think I might leave something to leave behind for a future kid to find there. Ooh, and so cool. one of the things I know is pretty cool right now is Pokemon cards. So I think I'd bring a Pokemon card and hide it there and see if any of you guys could find it. <laughs> Great. Now we have a question from Ryan in Florida for Ms. Vance. Ryan asks, do you ever want to go to space? Oh, I would love to go to space. Uh, I think it would be the greatest adventure you could have. So I'm pretty excited that I get to talk to someone who's actually done it. Fantastic. And now here with us today, we have Aria, a kindergartner from right here in Houston. Aria, would you like to ask Ms. Vance your question? What? Favorite book? Oh. oh, that's a great question. I have a lot of favorite books. Um, one of my favorite kids' books that I like reading right now is one you might like about space. It's called May Among the Stars. Mm -hmm. And then I have favorite books that I read when I was a little bit older, like The Little House Books were some of my favorite by Laura Ingalls Wilder. And then I've got favorite adult books too, but probably less exciting. Now Sam, joining us from all the way in Washington, has asked, if each of you could take one book to space, what would it be and why? Oh boy, that's a little tricky. Um, probably The Little Prince. I really love that book and it has 
so many cool uh, connotations for, for life, and so probably the Little Prince, if you guys have heard of that. I think if I were going to be in space for a while and I only had one book, I might get a little bored. So I might bring an encyclopedia, something that just has hundreds of things for me to read about all sorts of different topics. Hi, Anne, if you want to ask Sunny your question. What was your favorite subject in school growing up? So my favorite subject in school was math, sort of like Margaret. I don't know why, it was just a lot of fun. I loved actually solving problems and actually seeing that the, there's a solution to the end of it. And you can go back and double check. So I liked math and also because my math book was really heavy and I didn't want to carry it back home. And then back again, I used to do all my math homework at lunchtime. <laughs> I also really loved math when I was in school, but my other favorite was history. So when I went to college, I had to sort of decide which way was I going to go, and I ended up studying history for college and graduate school. I think that's probably my favorite. Evan, a seventh grader joining us today from California, wants to know how reading could help him to become an astronaut one day. Sunny, any words of wisdom? Oh, sure. I mean, there's so much to learn. You know, when I was your age, I thought everything had already been invented and discovered. And then I started reading more and more, and I realized that some things had, but there's so much more that we have to learn about and discover. And being able to read books and understand more new concepts and ideas allowed me to understand that, wow, we can still explore, we can still discover, and that's what reading did for me. And then, Ian, if you would like to ask your question. while you were in space, and what made you pick that book? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I read a couple books. I didn't bring too many books up there with me. I told you, mentioned that I would have liked to have brought The Little Prince. I didn't think about that earlier, but my dad actually sent up a couple books with me, so I had something that he recommended called the Bhagavad Gita, and so I could read that story while I was up in space, and it made me think about my family and my friends back here on Earth, because that's what I really missed the most is my family. So it was a nice connection to be with my parents while I was up in, in space. And Kelly, a first grader in Maryland, would like to ask Ms. Vance, do you believe reading helped you to become the second lady of the United States? Well, I think reading helped me do everything that's happened in my life, from going to college, to deciding what countries I wanted to visit or what cities I wanted to explore, to coming up with my favorite hobbies, um, to even having any idea what to do when I had babies and how to take care of them. So <laughs> without reading, I would definitely not be here today as a grown-up with two or three great kids or as a second lady. And Giovanni, a first grader from right here in Houston, has one last question for Sunny. Giovanni, you want to take it away? Um, what was your, what did you like most about your last visit to the International Space Station? Well, my last mission to the International Space Station was awesome, Giovanni. It was a lot of fun. I got to fly a brand new spacecraft, which was cool for the first time. Got to try it out, try driving it a little bit. Um, and then after we docked to the International Space Station, we actually got to live there for a little while. And I think I had pretty cool hair when I was up there. Did you remember seeing it by chance on TV? It looks a little bit like that. <laughs> so that's pretty cool when you're living in space. Everything floats, your arms float, your hair floats. And that part is pretty awesome. <laughs> Great. Thank you all so much for your questions. The fun and learning is just getting started. For those of you here with us today, we'll start transitioning into an activity. So turn your attention to our NASA experts who will soon be up front. For those of you on NASA Plus, we invite you to head to nasa.gov slash learning dash resources. Thanks for joining us for Second Lady Usha Vance's Summer Reading Challenge, and be sure to print out your own reading log online at whitehouse.gov read.